I got a dress, I'm wearing a dress today, but I've never worn it in public. And then I was like, Hawk versus Wolf. I don't think you need to start here. You're against it. I'm not against it. I just don't think this is this is the the place where you need to that that, that needs to be the inaugural event. That's what I'm saying. I just wanted to be relaxed. I mean, don't you doing a bunch of shows of your own each yeah. week? Yeah. Are you gonna wear a speedo on this? I was gonna wear a dress. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you should. <laughs> I, I, we wore, we wore a lot of dresses in those days. I give up those shows, yeah. Jason. Be, be whatever you want to be on the show. That's a great yeah, life lesson. Yeah. And in life. I'm not Tony Hall. Hey everybody, it's Jason Ellis and Tony Hawk, Hawk vs. Wolf, greatest podcast of all time in the history of the universe. What what he said about our podcast, uh, and we have decks that are of the podcast. Signed by the greatest skateboarder <laughs> of all time in the history of the universe and me. Two decks. Go side by side, signed by each of us. Right there, black with silver. I love this board so much. Tim Baring art on both of these. Shout out to Tim. And get yourself one of these bad boys. Black and silver, diptych, available now. Get one today. Uh, you can get it at TonyHawk.com and in the shop, right there. There's a little menu, upper right, shop. See both of these. Click add to cart, and we hope you give it to someone that has liked and described already. Yeah. Make sure you do that if you haven't. Thank you. Jason. Total. I mean, yeah, Toner. You did it. I got a lot of uh, support. Yeah, yeah. And, and yes. people said that uh, Tony is being mean <laughs> and saying that if you want to wear a dress, you should right. be allowed to wear a dress. If hey, I may. I can, no, before okay. you may, right. okay. I, I, can I say that I, I went 100% on, on defending you because <laughs> I know you. you and I know that <laughs> me coming out and doing whatever that I do... You've been a one of the biggest supporters, and I know you off this show, and you are uh, 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 an ally to the LGBTQ. I know. What is it again? The the genocide or whatever it is. What? Genocide quoi? That means you don't know what. No, that's how you say uh. LGBTQ if you're gay. <laughs> I like. You're trans a renaissance people. man yeah. of the legitimate quoi. What? That's how I pronounce LGBTQIA, the legitimate quoi. I want to do that? Yeah. Legitimate quoi. Legitimate quoi. Just sounds... I'm a member mm. of the legitimate quoi. The legitimate quoi. Only one person was like, hey, uh, just so you know, I'm a huge supporter and I don't like the way Tony was talking to you. And I was like, <laughs> okay, Tony was... To I can wear a dress at Tony's house whenever I want. And Tony would be like, that is a sexy dress, Jason. And I'd be like, thanks, Tony. <laughs> Those are the All right. exact words yeah, he would. He would. Okay. Yeah, I like yeah. that. It right, is. I, like that. And it's, I appreciate okay. it. It's good. <laughs> But there was also somebody in Germany. Germany is sending me dresses because I said, "Is that, that what that is?" I only have one dress. Yeah, that, is that from Germany? No. Oh, no okay, because I was saying that yet. does have a German vibe to no, it. No, this is sure. this is this is Jeff. Ba this is like twenty bucks because I all didn't right. want to go all out and be like, you know what? I don't like dresses. Okay, if so, if I may just have closure on this. Yeah, I was only discouraging you from wearing it because we had guests on that. We had never seen before. Right. And, and you think that they, they... But they already... they Presumably, they know who we are and that we already have this other vibe going on. And right. they come in and you're dressed and they're like, oh, maybe this is a turn of events or something else is going on. Do I have another so, vibe now? No, I'm just saying... Not another vibe. I just mean like they know how we generally again. are. Oh my God. I feel really good that he was able to that's do what, it I'm, while that's what I'm, I'm trying to get to. Show. Well, that's what I'm trying to get to. So what I'm trying to say is that... <laughs> We were, we were having strangers come in and, and maybe they would throw them off and they wouldn't be as comfortable. That's all I said, right? Yep. That's not exactly, but yeah, that's what you were trying to say. That's what I was trying to say yep. through our muddled conversation yep. that we had. I made it and then You guys have a podcast together? You came in, <laughs> came in today. You're on it. Wearing a dress because Corbin is here and we are homies with Corbin. Right. 
and it's the perfect entry point. It's the perfect gateway. Right. Because Corbin believe. wouldn't judge me for wearing a dress. I mean, he would judge me. It wouldn't me, throw but him a, off. Yeah. He'd be That's like, yeah, my point. There you go. It has not thrown me off at right. all. Accessorizing is a new thing that I didn't know about because I was wearing the dress and a friend was like, you don't have a belt. And I was like, I need a belt. And I Dude. didn't know anything about yeah, it. Yeah, but I, I got that NorCal chain. Sick, like I mean, as soon as you walked out of the bathroom, I was like, the first thing I said was, oh, sick. And then walked to the couch and sat down. So, yeah. And then yeah. these boots, look at this. Look at this. I'm into it. This is high fashion right now. But I, I think you should have a like a NorCal wallet <laughs> off of that chain. <laughs> Yes, that's why you shouldn't wear a dress, Tony. You? <laughs> you don't get it. Fashion police over here. Yeah, what do you mean? You saw, you agreed with me when I said it before. <laughs> I did. I was just if you just agree sometimes, you don't think I should have a wallet hanging off here, do I you? I just think it's funny the chat that you guys have between each other, so I just keep running with it. You're always pretty smooth, Corbin. Corbin Harris is Thank here, you. everyone. Thank you. That's a nice Corbin Harris. jacket thing you got on. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You play golf, right? I... I listen. I was introduced to golf by my grandparents when I was like twelve years old. Oh wow! Okay. And Nan and Pop used to say, "Hey, like have a couple of lessons." I, to be honest, I back then I couldn't stand it because yeah. all I wanted to do was like snowboard, skateboard, like do everything else. Um, but I've got back into it since COVID. Recently, yeah, a year and a half ago, I got is some clubs. Like, do you like playing, or is it more to you because you do high level business deals on the court? <laughs> I mean. That's a I'm, legit question for him. Yeah, I mean, to to be honest, it was like our CEO was like, "Hey, psst, start playing golf. It, it'll be good for you." Yeah, for a business, hundred percent. But you are you have got into to the point where you enjoy. It. I think is it. I get, mean, I wouldn't say there's definitely days where you just like want to snap the club and you want to get you don't want anything to do with it. But it's funny you can play like days in a row and then you think you'd get better and then the last day you play you have the worst game of your life. So, ha so that was going to be my it's next question. It's kind of like question. skateboarding. Have you got Sometimes better? Sometimes for me. <laughs> have you got better to the point where I... Because I always thought I played a little bit and I was like, if I got good enough, I think I would enjoy this a lot more. Yeah. Like when I just hit things and they go flying in the bushes over and over again, I'm like, okay, I'm pretty much ready to go home now. You know what I mean? But I think if it kept going near the hole, I'd be like, hey, I'll, I'll hang out. I think for me, it's a confidence thing. Like when I step up to the first, you know, when I'm going to hit the first golf ball, I'm a bit like... I'm stressing out because you're playing with people sometimes that you've never played with before or whatever. Once I kind of let that go, that's when I start playing better. And I'm right. just like, you know, you're there for four hours. Do you think so. it could be bad for business though if you're really sucking? And like, dude, this Absolutely guy. too. Somebody asked me to play. I'll tell you this story. Somebody asked me to play like three years ago. He, he um, this guy's a, a friend of mine still. He, he owns a bunch of uh, Toyota, you know, outlets in Australia. And I've had affiliation with them for a long time. And he was like, oh, and this was before Live, the golf tournament came out and whatever. He was like, oh, you want to play with Greg Norman? And I was like, absolutely no way. Yeah. He's had a time set up for us and everything. People, friends of mine would like yell at me now for not taking it. But like, it would have been painful for those guys to play around with me when I'm completely But hopeless. were they trying to include you because they were going to try to work out some sort of business partnership? Yeah, he wanted me to, like, I'd, I had a long affiliation with, like, Toyota Lexus in Australia for, like, 15 years. And I think he was like, hey, Greg's a, a friend of mine. Come oh, and play wow. at the Australian golf course. And I couldn't do it. But I'm going back there to play next month. So I'm with trying him. to get as much, not with him, with the other guy. And, uh, you know, I think it's my first step. Oh, no, I think life. you missed your shot. I did. So. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what do they? Do? Whatever. What I mean, you, it happens. What do you expect? You know, like I feel like if like you're you're a skateboarder that can really skateboard, and if somebody who was trying to skate that couldn't skate, like uh, Liquid Death, the guy that owns Liquid Death, he's a skater, but he's not very good at riding vert, and he came and skated with us, and it was like he took a minute to learn it, to drop in on it. It's different. And, and when Mike is he's, when Mike dropped in, like is he ripping with us? No, but. Did I think for a yeah, but, second? But, but golf, you're slowing down the whole thing. That's that's sucking. the issue. See, with skating, yeah. I actually I actually love skating with people who are just trying to to pick it up. Yeah, yeah to help. Because I love trying to help them. And I mean, you guys are the same too. Yeah. I've skated with you on the ramp. You, you love doing it. You're like, okay, we'll put your feet here. You know, whether yeah. it's someone that's just skating or whether it's someone 
Yeah. Like Whether it's somebody that's like, that was pretty good and they're getting a little a little, a little hyped up in Tampa and and, he, and when I jump on the deck, he goes, hey, man, maybe slow down a little bit. And I was like, I completely understand what you're saying. <laughs> I was getting a little Sick. I was getting a little hyped. And, you, know, you can see his feet a little, moving a little. A little, a little you know his feet moving a little too much across the flat? Yeah. Like over adjusting? I was still in the middle of like, skateboarding was just a real challenge for me yeah. but I, what was it for you was it the crowd were you just over it was, hyped it was the crowd and it peers? was tampa and it was like Pierce, frazier yeah. and all yeah. those guys were on the deck yeah and i was like dude because i usually try to take it safe because i know i'm super wobbly and i'm dangerous yeah but i just sort of forgot and was like crumb frazier and i dropped in like i was still skating with crumb and frazier and i was like why am i le- why is my board wobbling across the flat and i was like i don't care i'm just gonna charge it and i they were there were several close calls yeah. i landed in the channel on a front of air and made it sick and i was like every other day since i've been skating again i would have so bailed that i that's what i've always loved about your skateboarding though you're on the edge of your seat like what's he gonna do like you're just I'm thinking the same thing it's good what's gonna happen <laughs> it's good but I got to tell you, man, I've been sk- I skated the other day for the first time since I've been completely sober. Yep. And I hadn't skated since I, I skated one day after I did that five, so maybe two months ago. Mm. And it's the best I've ever skated. Yeah, the reviews were in. Stop, stop said you were killing it. He yeah. said you did a... I heard through Tony the uh, three days ago that Stab told him that you were ready. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it's getting sure. around, dude. <laughs> he said, he said you did tail grab, tail grab yeah. nose monk first try. Yeah, first try. That's I go, sick. Colin was there and I go, hey, Colin. <laughs> Check it out. And just frontside nose grind the gap. And I, it, as I, the craziest bit was my, my truck hit the coping and I was like, I see that. And then I bonked off and I was like, my feet are on. You may as well make it. And I'm like, I've never thought that. Be- like in the last two years of yeah. me skating again, I was just like, ah, I think I've got her. And then I either slam or I roll away. But I was like, I know where my feet are. So it was like, not even the being better. It was how much less stress was involved in every ride because I knew where I was going to land. I was like, oh, this is probably not going to work out. Bail. All all the other times, I'm like, pretty sure I'm going to make it. Or I think my tail's going to hit. It's such a good feeling having that. Having having that and that like... Just being on point. Like inner calmness about you. Yeah. I know for a fact that I can do this tail slide. It puts the fun... You're skating vert as often as he is these days. So you're coming in cold turkey too. Every single time. I skated Every like time, yeah. yesterday and the day before and I hadn't skated in like eight weeks, nine weeks. Right. But I, my whole my goal with skating is I don't want to lose any tricks. I just want to keep it up. Yeah. But but vert helps me go back to like just skating concrete parks. Right, because you know the speed. Like you're going fa- so fast on that ramp when you're in the well, ball. Just, it's not in- slow. as intimidating. I'm just, it's just not as intimidating. Right. And obviously skating Tony's ramp too, as you know, it's the best ramp in the world. So it's like you feel it's, comfortable. It's wide. It is really good, but it is big and you do go real fast. Like, and, and that <laughs> is a thing that like any other little ramps, the Vans ramp and stuff where I'm like, okay, if I fall, I don't feel as intimidated. Yeah. But on Tony's ramp, like when you start going fast, you're, you're going faster than anywhere else. Yeah, true. But I'm not doing that many tricks. <laughs> so Still anyway, it. I'm having fun. That's the main thing about it for sure. Corbin, what would you what would you say your official job title is now? You let's see, let me go back. You were a professional skateboarder. Yes. T V personality, talent, commentator. Yep. And that now? was it. And now a couple of things still. Um I mean, thanks to you guys too. I'm back at X Games hosting that after crazy, huh? after a hiatus of uh, a few supposed years. Supposed to high five me. Oh, oh Jesus! Yeah, Leave me hanging. I don't know what you're doing over there. Um, Talk to the end, bro. <laughs> I thought he was like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Everyone stop yeah. what they're doing. Is this how he orders drinks again or something? He's pretty cocky, <laughs> right? Um, he tells people that he invented the 720 before he orders it. <laughs> Uh, job titles. So I'm a partner at the family agency, which is a sports and music agency. Um, uh, I've been there for around four or five years now. What what led led you to that? Skateboarded like professionally for around twenty years, and and that overlapped with television. It's kind of funny backstory on that. I'll, I'll just give it to you quickly. Was I wasn't making enough money skateboarding. You know, like I was on like twenty thousand dollar contracts in Australia from clothing companies and whatever, and 
out of school, I was doing like laboring and whatever else I could do, like to get cash in hand to be basically like save for three months and then go to like X Games in Kuala Lumpur or like try and head to the States or whatever it was, trips. So I would just did that. Also at the same time, my mum was like, you have to do something else. Like you, you need to become like a chippy or like a, a carpenter or electrician. It's funny in Australia that that's like, cause I got that too. It was yeah. like, you're, I mean, you're not educated. So you're a, you're a Bricky's laborer. You know, and I'm like, oh, I don't want to dig holes for a living. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, I was a Bricky's labor, and I was like, I am going to America to be a pro skateboarder because I don't want to do this. I'm not saying it's a bad job. I'm just yeah. saying for me, it was. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Yes, man. Your fave. You get one of these bad boys in you and you are a cobra ready to attack. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets yeah. and at the fraction of the cost. Yeah. You can take them anytime, day or night. You so can. You can plan anytime, ahead. Anytime. Anytime. You can wake up. Whoosh, whoosh, Bob is your uncle. You can go <laughs> to sleep before you go to sleep. Whoosh, then you can have a midnight boner. Who cares? Yep. And you can be ready anytime the opportunity arises. Yeah. <laughs> it's all done online. Uh, there are no awkward conversations, no waiting in line at the pharmacy. No. You just sign up at bluechew.com, yep. consult with one of the licensed medical providers. Yep. And once you're approved, your prescription will show up in days. Yep. And then it keeps coming. You get a regular, like, at a time. You can re-up. Yep. So you know that every month or wherever it is, however many you need, because that's the other thing. Once I figured out how many I need to last me until the next time, because now I've got it figured out. Well, hey, does it work? Do you think you need it? Does Try it for work. a month free and you will you will see. With Blue Chew, men everywhere are excited to see the postman, because when your package has arrived, your package has arrived. That's me. I'm excited when I, I see gonna, the postman. Uh, I was going to say. <laughs> I am, seriously. <laughs> I look at my little thing. Do you thing. really see that, like, the postman? You're like, oh. I know what the, it's a discreet package, but I know what that package looks like, and I don't have to open it to That's know true. what's it's in there. It's discreet. The yeah. packaging is discreet. You wouldn't know where it came from. Well, I do. Jason will. Yeah, exactly. It's on. Blue Chew tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. Yeah, it's I'm American. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code Hulk Wolf at checkout. Just pay five dollars shipping. That's BlueChew.com promo code <laughs> Hulk Wolf to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. Thank you, Blue Chew, for sponsoring our podcast. Oh, big fan. So good. Yeah. No. No. I I did that and I dug a lot of holes and I did concreting and a lot of different stuff. But I I remember going to TAFE, which was like. Uh, you know yeah. somewhat like university yeah. like uh, you could do courses and whatever yeah I, I remember looking through the courses and i was like what is the quickest course here because like electrician carpenter was four years and i was like yeah. my whole life's gone what yeah. are you talking about like yeah. all i want to do is get to america or like just go on skateboard and be on every trip i remember looking at it and it was real estate property management business diploma full-time four days a week one year and i was like bang i'm in and went and did that Got my certificate and then I was allowed to like go and travel at that point. Mum kind of let me. Oh, okay. How old were you? I think like 17, 18 at that point. Like yeah. when you're finishing school. I yeah. mean, at the same time, I was kind of like, it was just after that, I just started doing TV. All right. And I got a job at Fox Sports in Australia. In Australia. Yeah. How was that doing TV in Australia? I feel like doing skateboard stuff in Australia at that time, the people in the TV world had no idea what skateboarding was 100 percent. it like, was I, I did a few things in australia where i was like this is i'm the only one that and, and, and they're trying to get me to deliver in in their words and i'm like if you th i feel I'm like he came he came after that sort of push though because from what i know and especially with aussies they they know corbin as a tv personality as much as a skateboarder yeah you know what yeah, I mean? I was, so it was, was already it was already more embraced. It was But the TV people I, still didn't know. I wouldn't say it was embraced. Okay. Like at that point, I was definitely ridiculed for being on television. Right. And it was the same time that I think CKY came out kind of in the States. So that was super cool. And yeah. then Sheckler had his show and he got ridiculed at, at different points right. as well. You know, he was a young kid on television with his family having a show. And I think in Australia, the skateboard community aligned me with that and oh, i was wow. like i was like hey guys like i'm 
I'm interviewing you. Yeah, I'm helping like, you. I'm helping you out with yeah. your sponsors. And the first show was called Corbin Presents. It was on five days a week. And I presented skate shows on like Fuel TV. Yeah. And I did that for four years. And then I went into... Um, I-, I wanted to do something more elevated. Like I really like the talk show like host. Yeah. Like scenario. And I, I also thought, going back to what you said, Jace, was like Australia... And I wouldn't say didn't understand it, but they're uneducated yep. towards skateboarding. Yep. So for me, this was this was not only could I make money from it, but it was a way for me to bridge the gap to be able to make skateboarding or bring skateboarding to the forefront, hopefully somewhere near football or somewhere near soccer or something like that. And that's what I really was trying to do at that point. Because it was only going to help me and help everyone and help the sport that I completely loved. It's got to be a weird thing to help people that don't like you for helping them. Yeah, but I, I think I just love skateboarding that much. That's why I was doing it first. And I even did things like, you know, the show. To, to, to be able to, like, get Australia interested in what I was doing somewhat yeah. for TV executives. Because yeah. they were like, action sports, skateboarding, we don't know. Like, yeah. we're we're... We're a sports channel that just does AFL and the numbers are here and this doesn't bring in anything. I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a 1950s theme. I'm going to get dressed up in a suit. I'm going to have slick back hair. It's going to be like no other skateboarder that they've ever seen. And that was my thing. And I brought in different like, um, you know, Anthony Sedgwick was was one of the guys. He works for Red Bull Media House now, but he was the one of the guy one of the guys who like produced it and kind of like helped me. And he understood that as well that I was trying to bridge that gap. But I interviewed. I reached. That's kind of how I met Tony. I reached. Oh, out when to we Tony. did that interview on Bondi. Yeah, I reached out to Tony on which Twitter. show was that? Pop Gun. Pop Gun. Yeah, Pop Gun, which was like the interview based show, and I was interviewing Dana White, Georgia St Pierre. Um, Kelly George Slater. Saint-Pierre, you mean? Yes, George Saint Pierre. <laughs> no, what? That was like 2010 ish, or before that? Just before. Yeah. Just before. We'd met. We'd met, but this was when you actually like you hit me back straight away, and you were like, "Oh, I'm at Sydney Olympic Park," oh, and I said, "I'll send a car to wherever you are." Yeah. And I was doing all of the bookings for the show. Yeah. I was doing absolutely everything, Dude. bringing everyone in yeah. through my contacts. So you it got Dana White, and then you got George because you got Dana White. Yes. Because that's not easy. Like, George is... Well, Dana at the time was heavily focused on, like, spreading UFC as far right. as he possibly could. Yeah. So he was just, you know, he wanted... Doing to, he, he was He was doing... He's doing it. You know, he's a workhorse. He's yeah, he unbelievable, is. Dana, what he does. And I think it's a testament to where it is now. But yeah. he was like, I'll do every show, any network, whatever it is. And he yeah. came on and, you know, I had Tony. I had... Uh, Dana and then uh, Slater so like the rest of them kind of came after that which was cool I did that for a year uh, and then I got offered a job uh, or, or I went for the job uh, at X Games for okay. skateboarding and then when did you move we did, here? We, we did X Games when they did the international X Games so that was like, so other, like 2012 other yeah 12, 13, yeah, 14 2012, 13, 14 was, yeah. so we were the main hosts for all these in Brazil, in Germany, Fosdo Iguazu, uh, uh, yeah, where Germany. Else? There was so, there was so many. There was a lot. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. Yeah, it was. It was fun. It was, was it fun. exhausting? I was stoked because I think at the time I'd like broken up with a long time girlfriend in Australia, yeah. and I was basically like, you know, what? this is it. I, I think I'd like just finished my book or something as well. So I was like, all right, I'm done. I have no ties to Australia. Like, spoke to mum and dad, and I was like, "I'm doing it." Yeah, which was kind of a big thing at that point. For me, it was. It was like, "All right, I'm I'm moving to the states." Yeah, I mean, if you had a good family re- relationship, that's got to be tough. Yeah, it was, and I think I mean, thanks to like Tony and Kathy and their family. Like, when I went on these tour, when I went on these like X Games World Tours and everything else that I went on, like they accepted me. Yeah. As as a member of the family, you really like. Well, we're just we just like you as a babysitter for our kids. <laughs> Kathy does mention that sometimes. <laughs> Wait, you're a babysitter? No, yeah. I think I'm just like an a, another adult around the house. You know, right. it was funny though because like he he was definitely a a fixture in our crew when because we took all of our kids to a couple of those X Games, yeah. including Germany, and they were young then. Yeah, that's and then they not were just easy. like. 
Corbin, yeah, Corbin, yeah. And then he talks funny and just yeah. And then yeah. they start imitating him. Like Katie, I've known since she's been like three or four yeah, years yeah, old. Yeah, like yeah. that's it's it's you know. <laughs> so then from that you transition into being an agent or I did. I ended up doing TV in I was still skating up until like two thousand and eighteen with like contracts really from like Nike and Red Bull Australian contracts or American ones uh, Australian contracts yeah it, it, but but they sponsored you to be the host of X Games who? or like they, like which part were they the more into you being a host of X Games wearing the stuff I think I was just like at that time I was like I, ca- I kind of like looked at what Tony was doing and other skateboarders that I really liked and I was like He's doing a book on, you know, skateboarding, how to. I was like, I really like that. I wanted to do that. I did that with HarperCollins Australia, like the ultimate guide to skateboarding. I was trying to be everywhere. I was doing like MTV red carpets, like Channel 9. Some I was hosting but he's saying, Nutri-Grain Iron he's Man. saying you like got those sponsorships because you were doing all that, not just because you were a skater. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I wasn't like top three in the world. I was like. You know, Dude, I got the biggest. I completely understand. When I became a host at X Games, I got sponsored by DC, and I was still skating in contests, but I wasn't good. You know, yeah. like I was, I sucked. You know, I'm making the top ten. I'd be like, yeah, tenth, and I'd be like, that's a wrap. I don't even care what happens in the finals. <laughs> it, you mean it? It had definitely <laughs> passed me. But Ken Block put me on DC shoes and clothes because I was on TV all the time. On the X Games. Yeah. And then after the X Games, he did the Tony Hawk tour and I was on that every episode. So I think like they were, they didn't care about me skating. Like it just so happened that I was built to jump the mega ramp. I'm not, I wasn't in my prime anymore, but jumping a big gap and hitting a big quarter pipe, I could do that. And Danny knew that I would never be as good as him. So he had no problem having me there with him, like somebody to talk to, somebody that'll jump it. So I got this little deal where X Games will pay me. More than anybody in skateboarding ever paid me. Yeah. DC were paying me because I was at X Games. More than any skateboard company that paid me. So I was like pretty washed up, making more money than I've ever made in my whole life. So I completely understand how that. But that's works. like, I mean, that was in the days before social media. So you guys are like OG influencers, doing yeah. sponsorships that were beyond the scope of just being a pro skater. So that's impressive. But I want to. But that know- that aligns you to understand what it takes to be an agent. For sure. For to, sure. To have other revenue streams for pro skater and other pro athletes. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think that's what that's really coming back to your question. It was a long winded answer. But yeah, I think it I kind of know all of the sides of it. Like the media side, being the athlete, like being in all of those different shoes. It and sounds and like it you definitely were, helps. You were you were your own agent from the get go. I like was to I have some of those jean deals and stuff that you had back in the day. Nobody else. Oh had yeah, those general deals. pants. Yeah, General Pants. I mean, that was kind of later on. I did my own clothing line with General Pants, yep. and that was a couple of years. That was like 2017, 2018, and 19 or something. Maybe that was. Did you approach them? Yeah. I mean, we. I had a close affiliation with them because I was with Surf, Dive, and Ski for about 10 years. Yeah. And that was like Surf, Dive, and Ski back it's at... Aussie reunion. I know, right? <laughs> I know, we're getting into I, I, I sense this. his accent getting thicker as we go through this Is right it? now. Yeah. yeah, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> Oh, mate, bullshit. <laughs> um, but yeah, go, like I, I was affiliated with those guys for a long time because they had the best skateboard team in Australia. It okay. sounds weird, surf, dive, and ski. Yeah. You know, but like they had Michael Davison, Andrew Curry, like all of these guys that I looked up to and ended up traveling with for years doing hoon runs and whatever in Portland. Hoon and runs? Hoon runs. It was like a, a company that, that Andrew Curry made up. Oh, okay. Now it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and yeah, it was a wheel company. Jake Duncan rode for them. Like all of us kind of rode for okay. this brand. And yeah, it was basically us just going on tour and having the most fun ever for 15 days straight each time and Hell yeah. doing an article for Thrasher or Trans World or whatever. And So uh, my question is you're in X Games and you're they're, they're You're not going to do it anymore. Or they're telling you that they're, they're not doing the same things that they were going to do and you're going to have less work. What goes through your mind to ch- to change into I'm going to be an agent like what did you make that decision did someone suggest that yeah i mean <laughs> it's an interesting story but it's like I, there was one point and i remember at minneapolis where i was dealing with with somebody and they're in my ear and i was talking to one of my friends after they'd done really well in the contest and they had someone that was 
um, not well in their family. Oh, and I wow. was trying to like, it was like, it was a moment where the person was like about to cry to me and they were like trying to rush me on that. Oh, wow. And I kind of like took my earpiece out and I was like, fuck that. Like, this is like, this is someone's life and a family member that's like really close to them and he, and he's close to me as well. And yeah. After that, I was like, you know what? Maybe this is just not for me right now. Yeah. And I kind of made the decision and I still did a couple of things, you know, Red Bull, Media House and whatever, but I was like, okay, I'm going to try and well, not, had, not go after that, that this was, job again. That was prior X Games ownership, which is made yes, that clear because right, yeah. everything has changed. In fact, I feel Sorry, like last summer... Man. Last summer was the, the, the emergence of the new ownership. Dude, the and that's, why, that's there, why I came back. The amount of anxiety that I had, because I left the same kind of way, just not as like as 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 cool as you did. Mine was more of a, um, uh, somebody was in my ear asking me to ask somebody a question and I was talking to them and I was like, who the f*** is this idiot in, talking to me in my ear? And Salamo was like, dude, he can hear you. And I was like, right. hey man, shut the f*** up. <laughs> And they were like, so Salim was like, dude, you cannot say that. And I was like, why have me here if he's going to ask the question? Like, if I'm talking to Bucky Lassick, maybe let me talk to Bucky Lassick because I'm pretty sure I know what I'm going to say. You don't know shit about this event. You're just some kook in the, in the, on the that's, mic. That's the extreme uh, version of what you went through. I can yeah, that, that, But that's more. a little too much. <laughs> yeah, that's a little you too left, much. I got fired. Like, I <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. I when I came back, just real quick, yeah. the Summer X Games, the amount of anxiety that I carried to be a because I was like you're not an on site guy you're the host with Salema and Tony I'm like who's how, now, now I'm gonna, listening to that earpiece yeah, am I gonna, am I, but the people in what, the, what else next? do you want me to say but the people in the ear this time were like great job and I'm like okay that's it and it's like yeah Jason that was exactly my experience last year at X Games and I had the best X Games I have ever, yeah, yeah, yeah. ever. Oh, I, I, I will, I will, I, I've said this to everyone. I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Yep. I did 50 more interviews than I ever would normally do. Yeah. And yeah. I had fun doing it. Yeah. I, I was relaxed. I had someone in my ear that was just like, hey, like, great job out there i can't wait to see this next one yeah. who do you want to yep oh niger i'll do niger that next thing. fantastic niger's great like who do you want yeah. to talk to never did i hear that yeah. the whole it was like who I do i know. want to talk to jason mm. farmer's dog i like farmer's dog so do so do our dogs yeah i feel like a a, a high level chef when i'm in the kitchen preparing <laughs> yeah. my farmer's it's dog true, yeah the dogs are all in the kitchen. They're all watching me and they're like, man, how does he do it's it? It's fine cuisine. Right. Because they, they don't see that I'm just like cutting a piece of plastic with the scissors and pouring it into a bowl. Yeah. They think that I'm whipping it up, making vegetables and meat and <laughs> cooking it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here you go. This, it's all very, in an instant. Gourmet meals. Well, Farmer's Dog isn't just fresh, higher quality food. They also send the food pre-portioned specifically for your dog based on their unique nutritional needs. This makes it easy to help your dog maintain their ideal weight, which is one of the biggest indicators of a full, healthy life. Dogs at a healthy weight can live up to two and a half years longer than overweight dogs. I like my dogs to be alive. Yes. I don't know any dog that doesn't eat it. And I have five and they're all different. And I got a cat. It's a hairless cat with, with little legs. Like he's a weird guy. <laughs> And he wants to eat it too. <laughs> they Everybody do. They likes do love it. it. I, yes, I can attest. They love it. I got you. 50% off your first box of fresh, healthy food at thefarmersdog.com slash hawkwolf. Hawk Plus, you get free shipping. Just go to farmersdog.com slash hawkwolf. Hawkwolf. 50% off. Free shipping. Off. Wake up, America. That's farmersdog.com slash hawkwolf. Do you love your dogs? You were saying it every other time, and then when I give it to you, you didn't say it. I just wanted to say it's free shipping again. I got confused. Because that makes it pretty much half off. You get half off the cost, and you get free shipping. So I'm saying that's more than half off, but you... It's up to your interpretation. Yeah. Go to farmersdog.com slash hawkwolf, and you'll see. Half off. <laughs> I don't know if we've actually had this conversation, but, but when I was doing it back then, back in the in the... What are we gonna, before be, the before times? Um, I was doing the we did we did Austin together, right? We did the first year of Austin. Mm. I was getting frustrated because it was like they say we're in Austin, but we're actually at the race car, race track, which is like forty five minutes from Austin. We're just stuck there all day. We are in a aluminum 
container watching the feed, right? We weren't even at the event. Yeah. So all the events are happening in the same area, but we're not at them. We're just in a we're in a trailer. Yeah, watching them. We might as well be in San Diego. We might as well be yeah, in San Diego. Yeah, yeah, we might as well be any like what. And also, you say you're all, it's like saying you're in L.A. when you're in Riverside. But but we're <laughs> so we're just like okay, we do it, and then you know, and then there's like the BMX dudes are waiting behind us because they have to come in to do their event, and we're just like oh, and then and then uh, the next year. I won't go into all the gory details, but they, they were going. Why don't you? Because there, it was just, because I because I like it so much now. I don't want to just be complaining about what it yeah. was. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it's not the but same. But they were going to cut anymore. my pay. They didn't hire him. And then I was like, I don't want to go there and be alone in the trailer. They just wanted you to do. Well, it. I don't know, or or with with Brandon or whoever. But it was just more like we did it because we were having fun. We were friends, and and then at some point it was like that's not going to be as fun. And it's yeah. still the same vibe as, is you're stuck in this box doing it. And I was like, I don't want to do it. Um, and then, uh, I bailed on it. That's that was when I left. Okay. And then they rehired him to do your job. To <laughs> Minneapolis. <laughs> Who was I doing it with in Minneapolis? I don't know, but I was just like, I was like, no, yeah, no, I was but, gonna... but I felt like I took a stand. Like yeah. I'm not doing it. They didn't hire Corbin. <laughs> they were like, Oh, we hired Corbin. Hey, I needed the cash. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. I don't know. I, I I think I was doing sideline reporting anyway. Whatever. I mean, now it is awesome. I love I love the dynamics. I mean, we saw the crowds la crowds uh, last year. It was I mean, pretty wild. For women's vert and stuff. Yeah. It was unbelievable. Yeah, it was like sick. to to feel that. Like Jason, you're up on on top of that ramp as well. Like it's like X Games is back. It's yeah. Sick. Yeah. Yeah, it's back big. I don't remember it having that much energy ever. Like you know, I was I've been in the mega ramp contest, and the crowd was nowhere near as raging as it was for the Ver contest last year. Like yeah, I, I didn't sick. even catch it. I was on the deck early, so watching the skateboarding, and then I went like, and I was like, "What? Where did they come from?" Yeah. Just to see if people. But it like, was cool. It's it's cool that we have that perspective too. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I sound like a curmudgeon complaining about that, but it's also that we had that perspective of of watching it sort of fade out and then just come back in such a big way. So it felt like a music festival this time. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. it had that atmosphere, like a big day out. Something. And like the that. level of everybody. Uh, everybody. I see what you did there. <laughs> everybody is so much better. Bringing it back to Oz and no. nice no. is less attitude. I think maybe it's because it's us that are asking the questions. And there's no, I don't want to hate on people that aren't, if you're not in and you're talking to us, it's hard, man. Like we don't want to let you in cause you haven't paid any dues. And when it's us and I'm talking to these guys, even people that I don't know that are younger, that don't even know, they know that I was, they know I've been around, even yeah. if they don't follow my career, they know I'm one of them. So yeah. if I want to ask, you know what I mean? An 11 year old, they're going to be like, yeah, like I, I, I and they, and they're, they want to communicate. And they don't really care so much about the camera or if it's going to be on... T There's this thing that in the older days where it's like, I don't want to be a, you know I mean? I want to be a mainstream. And it's like, it's not about mainstream anymore. It's about all of us making skateboarding bigger. If you go out there and people like you, someone else is going to skate. Remember when you got inspired by somebody and then you got your parents to get you a skateboard and then look what you got in your life? You're Now you're up. And I feel like there was a time there where people didn't see it that way. Like I, they would be like, I don't want to talk on TV. It's ESPN's for kooks. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, dude, you're making more people. Like, remember what you got from it? Yeah. This is your chance to like set up these other people. I agree with that, but, but not everyone is, uh, how do you, it's not that they don't want to. They just, they just don't, they're not wired to do that. They don't want to do that. And some don't, and they, they, they thrive right. without having to do it. Right. But others definitely rise to the occasion and like, oh yes, this is a platform to help promote what we do yeah. in a bigger way. But what I was going to ask you is you're saying how you, you, you know, you, you, the same was you're not in or you don't relate, but like you're an, you're an agent now to mm. people like Reese Nelson mm. and you can talk to her as a skater. That's yeah, got to be helpful. For sure. For sure. And I think that's why I Because sometimes that's the only language she speaks. <laughs> she does. Yeah. She does. We had in and out burger yesterday uh, for lunch. It was... When, when, <laughs> I, took, I took it in and out when we went to... Uh, we did that uh, TikTok live thing. Yeah. I th for me, it definitely helps. Yeah. I mean, 100%. I mean, being on that level, I think 
it helps more than any other like manager or agent just because you're not all about the deal or the money. Like it's, it's more like, you know, like I cross over into, you know, with Corey Juno, like I was on FaceTime at the 2021 Olympics with yep. him. Well, that last run where he's, where he, he got eighth place going into the finals. Like, all right, like we're, we're strategizing on like, what trick do I add for this to be able to get that, you know, extra half a point or whatever. Like, that stuff and even with reese nelson and and all of my other athletes um specifically in skate but i do others like golf and and some chef stuff as well but like I, chef yeah you're yeah. an agent for chefs yeah i got a couple of chefs on on the books i mean i love food we love food <laughs> a lot um and flower I've shop kind of, and i've kind of flower I mean, it's shop. a bar but we're we're both involved yeah oh wow yeah but uh but, but being on that level with like that that's what I really enjoy. Like being able to like from from the lessons that I learnt, failures and wins, being able to transfer that to, you know, a, an eleven year old female phenom that's gonna, you know, be one of the best skateboarders possibly in planet Earth. Yep. Um and, and to be able to pass that knowledge on and, and, you know, work with friends. I'm working with Tony. I'm working with like people that I like. And that's, yeah. that's what I want to do moving forward. Um, so it's good. That's what, that's what, that's why I really like that agent side. And, and, and on top of that also, like I do like consulting for brands too. So that's, that's what I like to do. How's that work? Um, specifically like the, the main brand I'm working for is, is a Italian, um, shoe and clothing brand called golden goose. Yeah. And, uh, I'm basically like global lead of skateboarding. It's, it's a skateboard brand. No, it was, it's a fashion brand and, and they're making a skateboard. Yeah. I mean, it, it caught, it was, the, it's a funny story how it happened. Um, with Corey, one of my athletes, uh, he was he was on another company at the time getting, you know, skate deals. But, um, you know, I, I don't think he was even on. I think he was just getting free shoes at the time. I, I can't remember on that one. But I just said to him, I said, when he when he switched from another management company to me, I said, you know, like, let, can you write down, let, let's chat and write down a list of your favorite brands that you want to be involved in. Uh, and at the top of the list was, was this brand Golden Goose. And, mm. uh, and you know, I ended up uh, cold call emailing the CEO. I got the CEO's email and they didn't write back for three weeks at all. Didn't hear a thing. And then the third week I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll just reach out again. I was like, hey, just check him back in. And they're like, we definitely want to talk. Oh, wow. And I was like, oh, wow. Okay, cool. I mean, they had been discussing it the whole time. They were just busy. Oh, Okay. They just wanted to contact and, and have a conversation with me. And I think where the brand was at at the time and they're, they're, they're growing massively in the States at the moment and globally, to be honest, it, it had a certain like maybe stigma about it on who wears that shoe, you know? Um, you know, maybe it's a mother with a Mercedes Benz drinking a latte or yeah. whatever it is, but there is this whole other subculture that loves the brand as well. Yeah. You know, like Steph Curry's wearing Golden Goose directly through the tunnel until he gets to, you know, the basketball court. And yeah. then he's putting his Under Armour shoes on Got it. for a $50 million contract, <laughs> whatever yeah. it is. Right. Yeah. So it's funny. It's like, and then a bunch of like, uh, a bunch of rappers were wearing it and so stuff is this too. super expensive stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, uh, anyway, reached out, ended up happening. Do they make uh, dresses for men? <laughs> they make unisex dresses. And clothing as well. So, so the yeah. answer is yes. They get it, Tony. They get it. They definitely oh get God. it. Oh, my God. And uh, we I'll buy you one. How's that? Can we... Dude, I will... Can we just drop the whole act and I'll buy you one and it's, we're all good? Because it is an act. I know you got my back. Can you give me a discount? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you just went... <laughs> you were Corbin's getting it for me? Oh, nice. God. I, uh, I was the catalyst to make it happen, yeah, though. Yeah, you did, yeah. 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 It's the fucking anyway. case. Uh, well, that's a weird... So but the, how fortuitous is that, though? Because you got Corey Juno a deal, and then he ends up placing at the Olympics. Well, he ended up scraping through into the finals, and then he ended up getting third, like, a bronze medal at the Olympics. Yeah. They were stoked. He was on air, like, basically, like... Like pointing to the shoe, like yeah. on, on, on. Did they make uh, a skate shoe for him? For him. Oh, there was sick. one, there was one shoe called the ball star that was, that was, you know, 
It's it's a company from Venice, Italy, but inspired by um, Venice, California, like skate culture. So oh, yeah. the shoes are skatable, you know, whatever. So. But they made it a, a, like a little bit more skate orientated. So For sure. Can, right. Yeah, we had to like do a lot of, you know, changes. Because he wanted to it. his way a little bit more, right? For sure. But yeah, so that, that, that kid can actually skate in like flip flops. Right. He can do anything. He's so good it's at like skateboarding. He doesn't really care about the gear. As long as his pants are the right size and like... He's good. Remember Jesse Martinez doing uh, as a kickflip backside tailside with Timberlands on? Right, yeah. Like back in the 90s, I remember thinking, like as a vert dude who didn't really care that much, I was like, I'm. he might have been one of the first people to inspire me to hang out and be in the streets. Yeah. Because I was like, this dude is sick. Yeah. Like I just thought it was so cool, like Timberlands. It is cool. I'm like, how A that? lot of Sydney guys did that too back in the day. Yeah, I was like, probably- Like Timberlands- um, and just wearing like I mean Gregsy did it Gregsy in Melbourne did it. so I was he yeah. was the one that taught me all this. <laughs> oh my god guys. <laughs> deep shout cut. out to Gregsy come on yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway fast forward um, I he ends up doing really well and we ended up starting a, a skateboard program and now I've got Rune Glyphberg on yeah um, uh, little Keegan Palmer's on the program too where we're gonna you know look into street skateboarding is that expensive stuff for skaters to buy uh, yeah, but I think it's, I think it's about, you know, telling the stories and having the content for these, for these kids. And, you know, like, Hey, this, this like streetwear culture and fashion culture in general has bled into skateboarding so much. Yeah. My, my role really is to make sure that they're doing it right. And they, they completely give me everything that I need. Yeah. And I, I have, you know, yes or no at the end of it. And that's that's the reason why I do it as well is because they're like, hey, you know, you're the expert in this field, and and that's what I really enjoy. And hey, it's like I'm bringing people together again that I really like to work with. Like Rune's a legend; he's one of the guys that I looked up to for years. He's now creating, you know, his own clothing range with them. Corey's Shit. working on his own shoe, um, and now we've also opened up and we're looking into the future, which I'm I'm kind of working on with the team. Like all sports, we're going into paddle we're going into tennis we're going into nfl what, what and paddle, nba what's, surf? like mini tennis shut up yeah mini tennis clothing line <laughs> Wait, Dude, it's, about, it's it's like, about ping pong you're talking about uh paddle what do you call it? it what's the yeah i know very similar it's like it? short tennis <laughs> what is everyone do? what is it yeah, <laughs> i can't think of it everyone knows people play it, it a lot people pickleball talk. pickleball yeah. it's similar to pickleball but it's not yeah, it's, it's another thing called it, paddle. It's, it's very similar to that for, is, for everyone no who doesn't know. No one's doing paddle in America, are they? European country clubs, something. Yeah, they are. It's you, it's it's one of the one of the fastest growing. Like it's that that and pickle are like the fastest growing sports in the world right now. Wow. And there's a fashion to it. I mean, you got to look good. Anything you're doing, right? <laughs> whether you're doing yeah. a podcast or whether you're skating, you got to look good. Podcast where I was thinking about skating with a dress on, but then I thought maybe not. Maybe we wear some tights underneath it. Yeah, or like those the, the, the Thought, hip, thoughts the hip, hip pad shorts. <laughs> yes, please. We'll blur anything. What you yeah. got? A, you got a comment? I said we'll blur it if if we see anything. Oh wait, dude, I'm not doing nude backs. It is the hell. Yeah. Basic, basic instinct. <laughs> if you're a guy that falls off a lot, it's not that's. It'd be different if I was like I salad flashes. Much know what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'll leave that, to Bill that is scary thought for sure. <laughs> that is not if you're gonna skate, you know what? though? No, if you're gonna skate in a dress, you got to bring back the Benihana. That's all I'm saying. Ooh. Ooh! Didn't you do a Japan Air? I got uh, and and yeah, show that, a ball or something. It, no, it, it it wasn't. But that's what they think it is, and I just stopped <laughs> arguing about it. It felt like I was protesting too much about it, where right. they were just like, "Yeah, right, dude." Oh wow, that's because I used to it. wear I used to wear I used to wear pink swim trunks under my skate shorts yeah that makes sense you, because i would go i would go from the park all the time i'd go from the park straight to the beach and go surf but that wasn't oh, like what? planned you just had pink swim trunks or you like you loved the no no that was just what i was wearing and then yeah. that, and that photo and it was like the, the pink is flashing and whatever right. mm. but it's fine if you think it's that the other thing I, i'll take it i don't care anymore <laughs> <laughs> go ahead <laughs> you toner yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You know, we all evolve. Right? Yeah. Hopefully. We do. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you've done a lot of evolving. You've had a lot of jobs. 
Yeah, I think I'm just like hustle. He's the hustle. I'm addicted. I'm a, like I like it too. Yeah, you know. I mean, that's I like that's, being busy for sure. It's part and parcel though. Like if you don't love it, I've always told people that you know whatever they want to be good at. I'm like, do you love it? Because if you don't love it, I'd probably call it quits before I start. Because it's like there's going to be tough times in everything in life, no matter what it is you're trying to pursue. And if you don't love it, when things turn bad and they start kicking you in the dick. You, you're like, oh, screw this, man. I don't need to be involved in this. But if you love something so much and it's treating you bad or you're having a bad run at it, you're not going to be deterred because you love it. And, yeah. you, and I don't care what happens. I'm never going to quit this, you know? Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think, I mean, I could have, as I said like before, like I could have gone home and done real estate. Dug holes. Or <laughs> dug holes. <laughs> I'd be hurting from it. But Did you, uh, did you consider going leaning into being a partner with ronnie ronnie and i still have stuff that we want to do we're working on like a clothing brand together so ronnie his buddy started the flower shop among oh, okay. other yeah. Uh, yeah. other restaurants and things like that a funny story Places. about that is ronnie and i ronnie and i met when we we're like 15 years old in cronulla that's where we grew up and we both caught uh, we caught the train to school he, he caught it for an hour to like to Edgecliff and I caught it for an hour and like 15 minutes to Bondi Junction because yeah. we went to schools out, you know, f far away from where we lived. Um, and we always had this like, this, you know, we loved at the time. We loved like Pharrell Williams, like Bathing Ape Streetwear. Like that was our era of like, you know, anything New York. And I had this opportunity to go to New York with this sunglass brand called Blind Eyewear. It was yeah. like those, ooh, sorry. It was like those big ones that Lenny Kravitz used to wear, remember yeah, that, yeah. and Madonna and whatever. So they pumped a bunch of money into the uh, Australian distribution side of it, or the, they bought it. And I ended up, this was 2005, this was my second trip to the States. And uh, I went directly to New York and I brought Ronnie <laughs> as my stylist. They had so oh, much it. money was that his first time for this in New trip. York? First time in New York. I was oh in the middle God. seat. He was here. We're in economy. And we were like, we, I remember seeing Manhattan for that first time, dude. And we were like, we just looked at each other and like, we're on. That's like, amazing. It was, it was so That's sick. where he lives now. Wait, you That's told where them is. that you ha are bringing a stylist. We, w they had like. Or they already they said, had, they, they already said, what is your, like, they, they put it out to you. Oh, do you need a stylist? I can't even remember really how that came about, but I remember like, we're talking like the budget on this was like $800,000 for like a skate trip for th skate and surf trip for three people. And we're going to one location. Like it was <laughs> wild. They had Vogue magazine, rush magazine, like three or four publications that came with us. <laughs> so then they sick. had, then I brought uh, who, Sean, who Sean Holland. Made that, who pitched $800,000? I mean, that's what I got told afterwards. That's probably just what they, they would allocate for any shoot, for anything. So there was two surfers and me, I was the only skateboarder. And yeah. they only brought me here to skate one bowl, which was on Cosby Street in Soho. And Richard Walker, who was the, the main owner of the sunglass brand, he had it there. And I went and skated there with Andy Kessler. Oh, it was wooden. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, a black yeah, one. Yeah, mm -hmm. Andy Kessler was there. That was the first time I met him as well. Sick. Um. And anyway, yeah, like, long story, a little shorter, but Ronnie came as my stylist. Um, they realized by the end of the trip, after like 12 days, that he wasn't really doing anything. <laughs> how, did, how, did they, how did they figure it out? Wait, did Ronnie oh, not even attempt to be like, hey, here's the uh, He probably was like, yeah. Uh, looks good. Uh, yeah. Look, walk back and I'm like, going to go to the bar. So like, he, kind of like... He, he did make some sort of bullshit effort no he did and he's 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 into it he's got a really great eye like if okay. you see the flower shop all of his restaurants and everything they're like they're they're you know like they're stunning what they like 1970s okay. theme like he he's got a really good eye for that stuff so when um, they figured out that he wasn't what was did anybody say anything he kind of like they left him out of a couple of dinners and stuff at the end which was pretty harsh like after everyone was together oh, wow. but this was like the funniest story is I obviously had jobs in Australia with television or whatever. So I kind of packed my bags up, went back there and then was between Los Angeles and Sydney skating, doing contests and whatever. He stayed and never left. And he's still there now, 17 years later. And he started off, it was like, he started off wanting to do a clothing <laughs> so brand. We, were, we, were, we had a 30, on that same trip, this is, this is right. Sorry. 
On the same trip, he was the stylist, but we'd been working on a 30-piece streetwear range. So we brought it. We had like full rack, like we had racks that we brought into all of these bags. So we were there to sell it. Did we you ended sell up it? To, to like to like start our brand. Yeah. Like that's what we wanted to do. We Did it wanted- work? No, it didn't work. He, <laughs> <laughs> he started, he, he ended up... Uh, I, I was making money from skating, so I was fine in television, and he didn't have really anything cooking at the time, but he's a really likable person, and uh, someone said to him, hey, like, do you just want to bring like this group of people to the nightclub, and I'll give you $3,000? And he's like, what? He's like, yeah, yeah, it's called promoting. And he's like, oh, yeah, I can promote. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah. And he like literally like promoted for one Oak and some of those massive nightclubs and brought like the people there. And then that kind of filtrated into what he's doing now. And now I'm kind of working with him on a new flower shop in uh, Austin, Austin, Texas. And he's got a bunch of other restaurants and we're like looking at doing like a new clothing brand 20 years later. <laughs> so- Obviously you got a green card and all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's 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 killing it now, which is great. But like, he was sleeping at Starbucks and on benches in like it was definitely like rough times there for yeah for how long? And and both of us, I think f- for me too. Like I was going on trips when I'd like I didn't have any money. I'd have yeah. like a hundred dollars max, and I'd, I'd be first... and I'd be in like Singapore. And oh I'd be like, God. I'd be like, all right, well, just gonna make it work or get place at the contest and they they would give us yeah, cash right. at that point yeah. so i was like first time i came here i had 50 bucks and, and then, look at you now and a, and a sleeping bag because i knew i knew it was gonna suck <laughs> but then like i got i stayed at lance mountain's house and then i lived with ben Chodo. so ben like sick. It, it all so worked nice. out pretty quick there was only probably like a couple of days of like i slept in a kid's playground with a sleeping bag so i just figured it was safe i'll never forget donut shop blew my mind Shop only sells donuts, nothing else. <laughs> I was like, you gotta it be joking. Did for me too at the time. <laughs> really? But there was all these things in the states where you're like, there's one shop for that. I, I remember going home and telling my parents and being like, yeah, like similar to that. There's a yeah. donut yeah. shop here. I remember they uh, just sell cupcakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what the? How does he make money? How many people want a cupcake? <laughs> It makes no sense. It makes no yeah. sense. And how I cheap remember. they were as well. It was like, <laughs> they put a whole box of donuts and gave them to me for like f- freaking five bucks. And I was like, I've got like 12 donuts. Some of them have cream filling. It's got to be like a hundred bucks worth of donuts for five bucks. Yeah, who's out the back making these yeah, things? Yeah, how do they make any money? Like, what are they what? making? Like two cents a day? Well, same, so theory, same theory. Same theory. Because in Australia, you would be more expensive. There's no I'll way. It's impossible to have a donut. That donut is like 15 bucks. I remember you know, seeing seeing the US through Dom Kekic's eyes because Dom came out yeah. as an amateur on Birdhouse yeah. and toured with us, but he was pretty young. He I saw like that photo the other day. You or reposted it. Yeah. He was real young. And, uh, and just watching him, everything was like that in wonder. It's like, what? And then I remember we passed a drugstore. He's like, drugstore? Yeah. <laughs> Thinking yeah. it was. They sell drugs? Yeah. Like you thought so you'd just like, get some bumps in there or something. Yeah. I was like, wait, yeah. what are you? I don't. Not exactly. Yeah. <laughs> a little different. A little yeah. different. And the cereal, that was the other thing. I went to the grocery store. I was like, how many things does they do they have in a grocery store? And then cereal, there's ones that you know. And then all of a sudden there's like Count Chocula with candy in it. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, I got ripped off my whole childhood. If I could have had candy for breakfast, I would have been so pumped. And it wasn't like one. It was like seven different kinds of candy cereal. I remember telling my brothers and it was like people gathered. You wouldn't believe what I was People gathered boys. around. You know what I mean? They gathered around me like it was like, okay. So there I was in the supermarket. <laughs> I looked to my left Count Chocula It actually With It actually is like You visited a foreign planet yeah, and, and my brother Well you like, didn't have social media So you'd go back And you'd tell these stories yeah, And people would yeah. be like People And people we're like bullshit We've always yeah. looked to America Like You know It's the biggest It's the greatest It's like You know Watched all the television shows Growing up All of that stuff So like people are invested yeah, I mean, I mean when I when I went to Australia the first time, I thought it was gonna be like kangaroos in the street. What well, kind of was, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, but for sure kangaroos, koalas. Yeah. Um, and then I think the thing that blew me my mind when I got there was Hungry Jacks. 
Yeah. yeah. It's like, what? That's Burger King. Like, yeah. nah, mate. Hungry Jacks. I'd, I'd rather Burger they had King a... too, to be honest. But it was the same menu. I was so yeah, confused. I didn't at, understand. You get a Whopper yeah. at Hungry Jacks. It's like, why don't you just call it Burger King? It's because because one dude was like, Nah, mate, I got a shop called Burger King. Yeah, yeah. Was no. it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I thought yeah. it was someone. I thought it was like some something along the lines of like, we need to make it more Australian. No, you know, no. no some guy had, had the a... name Burger King wouldn't and he give it wouldn't give it up. Yeah. Wow, he really dug, he, dug his heels in. Yeah. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember... the, oh, and then they had they had McDonald's and they put Beats. On the burgers. Hey, yeah. don't mess with yeah, that. <laughs> it's actually like a really Cut. good idea. Cut. Let's, have a, let's have a conversation about this. Like you always have an egg on a hamburger with a lot, and yeah. you have That's it. Yeah, food. okay. Thank you. you. I'm talking to. I'm talking to, to my people here. Yeah, the, the, my the people. Americans. <laughs> Americans. <laughs> they put beets and eggs on burgers. It's eggs, I'm down with. Beets. It's beets. not the same beets. Our beetroot is different than your beetroot. Your beetroot it tastes, tastes good. like dirt. <laughs> Ours tastes good. I don't know what happened. And maybe it's the way they pickle it or something. But beetroot in Australia is awesome. Beetroot here. Okay. I'm in the, I'm I will in the, say. I will say that on our last birdhouse tour, which was a long time ago, yeah, like 2000, I don't know, 11 or something. Um, uh, McDonald's is the only place that had free Wi-Fi. So the we Wi-Fi is still slow. But we would just post <laughs> up it? at McDonald's. It's we would post up at McDonald's I'm parking lots. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Maccas. Yeah. Everyone's, everyone's. Oh, yeah. So the, the whole, because we're in the man. bus. Yeah. So we're in the bus. The van would just pull up to the McDonald's parking lot. We'd be there for a half hour or something. And then on to the next one. So I used to crap on TV there because nobody has cable and everybody has cable here. And it was like four channels. And there's this one dude named, he's probably dead, but Bert Newton. And he had a real big head. And he was one of the first people I ever saw that had the, the hair plugs. Yeah. And they weren't good because it was the first kind. You know what I mean? So you could like see the little little dots on his head. But he was just the host of every show on television. No, Bert, Bert, is, Bert is television royalty in Australia. <laughs> is he still alive? No, I don't think so. Oh, good. Because be, he was like, he was looking like he was going to die before I left. <laughs> he, he was, he did like, you know. He had like Tonight Show ho like Tonight Show like settings and stuff like that. Oh, sick! Yeah, he was he was sick, but he did. But that that's what Australia does. They get one host and they're like, "All right, we're gonna run them yeah. on everything." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's only four channels, so I was like, "Why not just get Bert on every show?" And it's like I'm Bert, and we're here with the cook. We're cooking. <laughs> I'm like, I'm cooking with Bert, and then it's like the weather with Bert. I'm like, Jesus, Bert, <laughs> shut up! <laughs> there was one guy on Australian Idol. I can't remember his name. He he came from. He came from um, the music industry. And I remember like I had some beers with him one night at some like event or whatever. And he turned around and turned around to me and said, it's harder to get off Australian television than to get on it. He goes, I yeah. can't get off it anymore. Like I'm now on, they'll just run it till, till the death. Yeah. You yeah, know? he could come in and be like, hey, I just took a shit. I want to do a show about it. <laughs> oh, mate, that's a great idea. Bert Newton taking a deuce. Like, it was just ridiculous all the time, just this guy. His <gasps> wife was famous because every now and then he'd be like, what do you think? Whatever your name is. I don't know. <laughs> and it's like, well, like, give her a show. <laughs> oh, my God. Dude. <laughs> Bert's wife was like, <laughs> What was her name? <gasps> It was some old lady name. I too. can't remember, but she was rad. Rose or some shit. She was rad. <laughs> Rose Newton. I don't know her name. <laughs> she probably had hips. Oh, yeah. So we're just, good. It's, it's the uh, we're here with Aussie history. Yeah, yeah I find this a time. Sorry, machine. guys. So, I like it. It's funny. They got to learn some stuff. It's it's classic. <laughs> if I had money when I first went, because I I was the first like one of the first Australians to go there in skateboarding that saw these things that were successful that I knew would be successful in America. Like it wasn't even a... Jumbo Juice. That was the one that I wanted to take back. I was like, that's going to work in Australia. I remember Subway. I'm like, dude, Subway in Australia will kill. Starbucks, are you kidding me? I heard Starbucks didn't do well in Australia. No, it doesn't. Because we have good coffee and we were like, nah, mate, we don't like it. (laughs) So that was good too. I was proud of them for that. But Coffee's uh, like an institution. Burger King, all the like... Any fast food it's thing, had, it's like we'll eat it. It Bondi sub beach burrito. Yeah, he's. I, I just saw one. He opened up like a one in Blake. Yeah, right? I think okay, he opened so, up one in so Motorville. Blake came out here. Blake Blake Reed, shout out. Uh, Blake came out here because he was a pro inline skater, and I was doing demos with him, 
and he was so i mean this is this is from my perspective it might be a different story but what i saw yep. he came out here so hyped to be here whatever had mexican food here in socal and was like we don't have this yeah we don't have any had, mexican but then, food. then he so then he started beach burrito taco, yes. taco basically yeah. that's that's the, that's what i know it yeah. as well. taco bills taco it was bills? down the road from my house and we would go there and they, taco <laughs> bills didn't they didn't know what a burrito or any <laughs> of that shit was <laughs> And I, it's I remember, so good when Australians try to do Mexican. I, I was like, this is in, the, when I went to America and started having all this stuff. Like, but I was like young, so I thought Taco Bell was the sickest Mexican food money could buy. You know, and then it took yeah. me a while to go to like an actual place. But I just remember thinking, I mean, it's just its own lane. It's not, you know, it's definitely it's not traditional Mexican. It's not even Mexican food, but I made yeah, burritos. It's pretty good, I'm, and it, all Australians love the hard taco. Yeah, that is it. Yeah, really? you, you couldn't. They don't get, do you soft tacos. Get tortilla. Really. You couldn't get a soft tortilla. I remember trying to make tacos for everybody in Australia <laughs> and going to the supermarket and going, "Oh, this is going to be difficult." <laughs> like they don't have they hit taco mix, and I'm like, "Bullshit." Well, why do you like the taco. hard ones then? Because, because that's because what we're used to. One person got that taco. Bill, taco Bills had it. Oh, I see. And okay. nobody knew about like the burrito. I th- cha- like I freaked people out <laughs> with the burrito. <laughs> They were like, wait, you fold. Like, well, I remember folding. My dad's going, check him out. Get it. He can just, he's, he's right. He can he's just right. hold it. Walk off with your food. And no, the, 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 that's the, sensational. The other ones, you'd have it and you'd like, you'd bite into it and the whole thing would break. Yeah, just break it's it. It's a big <laughs> chip. So yeah. like, oh, so because like, they're, they're oh. Australian tortillas? Yeah. yeah. yeah Australian tortillas. <laughs> they didn't really know what it was for. So you literally got to get a fork. You eat a yeah. one bite, it snaps, it's everywhere, and then you got to eat it with a fork. It's a ball. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> best of, best of both so worlds, I, think, I suppose. Wow. Well, thank you for that uh, trip down memory lane. <laughs> That was fascinating. Just wanted to bring up everyone up to speed with uh, thank you. Australian Mexican. Corbin, thanks for uh <laughs> and also thanks for coming, sharing your story. Uh good work on everything. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. Yeah, that was really funny. And yeah. you know, you got to the inaugural dress episode. I want to see You're the wallet honored. next time too. I'm not doing wallet. wallet. Don't do limpies. Don't do limpies. Double what? with the double clips. You know the wallet that's kind of like that. Dude, it's not touchable. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Sorry. I'm gonna Just let it like, cross my legs so, like a lady. <laughs> oh look, he's got Tony's um undies on. He's got <laughs> he the does. Pink Tony's, can we get a close up on this? He's got the Tony's pink undies on. Yep. Is it? Oh, hey oh. Yeah. See. <laughs> I started that. You're welcome. This hurts, by the way. You got to stretch more. We don't have that much room. (laughs) Okay. Hey, like and describe his outfit. Do whatever you want with your life. Yes. Screw you, everybody. (laughs) (laughs) They also, Corbin was staying with me. Thanks for thanks for driving up to LA to do the podcast. That's all right. Yeah, of course. (laughs) You drove up too. Okay. See you guys.